Hi, the topic for this JDBC presentation is the result set interface. Result set is another main interface in the JDBC API that allows us to handle the data that comes back from a database query, the select query. So by the end of this presentation, you will know what a result set is, the definition of a result set and also the methods, the various methods that are available on the result set interface that you can use to iterate over the rows that come back from the database and retrieve the values of each column on those rows. So let's get started by looking at an example. Let's say we have a database table called bank account or account which has three simple columns, account number, name and balance of type number, where cat and then number. Now. From within your uh, Java application to, to execute a query and to retrieve the rows in this table, we use the execute query method on the statement interface. So once you create a connection and uh, create a statement from that connection, you execute the query by using the execute query method to execute a DQL. So if it was an update, you would have run or uh, you would have used the execute update for insert, update and delete statements. The execute query method returns a result set. So a result set is nothing but an object representation of your database table or the database rows. Once we have the result set, a result set can be represented in memory as follows. It has a record start area and then the record area and then the no record area or the record end area. So the logical pointer initially points to here and then when we invoke the next method on the result set interface, the pointer moves to the first record. When we call the next again, the pointer moves to the second record. So depending on how many our rows our select query gives back, we can iterate or loop through all these rows and then display them, process them as required. So the next method does two things. One, it moves the pointer to the next row. right? And also, it returns a boolean value of true if there is a next record. It returns false if it reaches the end or if there are no records at all and it points right here and there are no records returned by that particular query. If you try to do rs.next, it returns false. So our loop will never be executed if there are no records or if it reaches the last record. So within this loop, to retrieve the values of each of these columns, now we have got the rows in the result set, when you say next, you get each row. On each of those rows, to get the each column value, we have get xxx methods. xxx stands for int, if it is an integer, float, if it is a floating point number. And the index starts from zero. So to get the value of column one, I say get int zero, because this is of type number. And then to get value of name, I say get one. It simply returns me a string value. And then the index 2 will return me the balance value. So we, once we move on to the each record, we use the get xxx methods, get int for integer, float for floats, and get for strings. And we retrieve the values and process the values however we want to in our Java application. So it's that simple to use a, a result set. So the first thing is we get a result set by use, executing a query. Once we have the result set, we use the rs.next to move on to the next records and the result set has a start area and then a no record of the record end area in between it has the all the records when you call the next method for the first time the pointer moves from here to the first record and so on as you call it multiple times and the next method returns a boolean false if there are no records or it reaches the end of the record area so in a future session we will learn about result set metadata which gives us information, meta information about the columns. It tells us what the column type is, etc. Until then, take care, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.